Okay, so this is day two of our Adopt from Liberia 2024 YouTube journaling, we'll call it. Jeremy is here, but I told him he didn't have to be on the video. Um, thank you to everybody that watched the long one yesterday. This one will be a lot shorter because I kind of told you everything yesterday. And thank you to the people that subscribed yesterday. Please like share this YouTube channel to other people um, to try to get the word out because we need a lot of Americans to email the State Department on our behalf and express concern about the corruption and the um, problems we're having there. So I want to explain the I-600A. So we talked yesterday a lot about the I-600. The I-600 is a form that you file after your adoption is complete in Liberia so that you can get the U.S. government to approve your travel home. So um, we already have that done. Um, and also I just wanted to mention too the list of government officials we've already contacted. Byron Donald's office, he's a House of Representatives guy in Florida, uh, in our district here, they were actually pretty helpful. Um, they didn't know what to do, but they were nice. So that counts as a plus for me. Um, we have emailed Marco Rubio as well. His office has not responded yet, but it's only been a few days. And of course the state department and adoption at state.gov is open for anyone to email. So if you're like watching this and you're like, I want to, I want to help, um, send me an email or a comment below and get, get our contact information so that you can email on behalf as a taxpayer. You don't have to really be an adoptive parent. You just be a concerned taxpayer and email them. So the I-600 is the exit document basically that you file once your adoption is complete in Liberia. But since they're not U.S. citizens yet, they have to have permission to travel and cross in immigration-wise. Everybody knows immigration is kind of a problem these days. So we had to file what's called an I-600A. So to do an I-600A, what it is, just in a nutshell, the primary purpose of the I-600A document is providing the requested information on the application to determine if you're suitable and eligible to adopt an orphan. Filing this application allows the USCIS, which is the, um, the U.S. Immigration Services basically, to make an initial determination on your sustainability, suitability and eligibility before you file your Form I-600. So this is, an I-600A is basically like, we're reaching out to the U.S. government, we're saying we're going to Liberia, we're saying we want to adopt a kid there, and we're proving to them that we are suitable to do that. Now, how do you get suitable to do that? Well, you have to have proof of your U.S. citizenship in writing, which doesn't sound like it's a big deal, but I mean, like the amount of documentation you have to find. And then you um, have to have proof of your spouse's name, identity, and, and citizenship. And if your spouse is not a resident of the United States, you have to p supply extra. So like, if they're not a U.S. citizen, um, it's a whole different thing. So a copy of your marriage certificate. Proof you and your spouse terminated all prior marriages before you married each other. So like, you're, you have to prove that you're married and you have to prove that you're only married to one person to adopt a kid in Liberia, even though it's illegal to be married to two people in most states. So, <laughs> proof um, you have complied with pre-adoption requirements in the state of the child's proposed residence. So the state of Florida has their own requirements and we did all of that and it was awful um, with all the paperwork. We had to do 30 hours of classes. Um, we had to do fingerprinting for our local government and we had to get letters of recommendation from five of our friends um, to, and then we had to get things notarized we had to prove our employment all of that on top of that we had to have a home study and a home study is basically where you pay someone between two and three thousand dollars we paid twenty six hundred for ours to come into your house and basically dig into everything you've ever like if you've ever seen a therapist they're gonna know whatever your life is about um, previous home studies we had a previous adoptions so we had to have that any divorce decrees that are in our history they had to have that we had to prove like basically that we're good people i mean you know and they had to have five letters of recommendation so not only did we have to have it for the i600a all that we had to have all that kind of stuff but we had to have this again for our home study so we have this big folder that keeps all this stuff in so once we get that done that's basically our intention to adopt these kids from liberia and the i600a is a common form for all international adoption so the u.s state department has has known that we have wanted to adopt these kids since may of 2022 when we sent it and they approved it october 18th of 2022. 
the U.S. State Department can come on, come to my house, knock on my door. They've had my fingerprints. They've had my entire life in a box. They could ask anything they want about our adoption, our intent to adopt. They could even ask right now about the kids we're adopting and learn about them now before it's ever, I mean, they could do it now. It's, it's very open, but they are not doing that. So they are just sitting on it. Now, if you go 18 months and nothing happens, you can file one extension and that is all. And you have to be eligible to make that extension. And to file the S-600, it asks 600 a it's $775. You better mail the check when you mail the paperwork or you'll have a 60 day delay. And um, some I-600 days are taking six and a half months to process. So ours came back pretty quick actually to go from May to October, even though Jeremy forgot the original check, but mailed it like immediately. And he talked to somebody there. Um, so that's the I-600A. It's like step three. <laughs> and then once you get there, um, once you get to Liberia, once we adopt them um, from the Liberian standpoint, we get to adopt them after we're there for 72 hours. Then we send in the I-600, which is similar to the I-600A, but it's just asking for those kids specifically um, for us to complete their adoption. So now when we filled our I-600A, we said we're adopting two little girls, like we're very specific on what we're doing. So again, if they wanna look at this, they can. Um, but if you wanna request an extension, here's your steps. So ours will expire April 18th of 2023. So unless we've completed our adoption, which doesn't look like we're going to, then we will have to submit the following things to the USCIS. We can do it 90 days in advance, but no sooner than 90 days. A written request, an updated home study, which to update your home study costs another $500, and then $200 on top of that $500 for our agency to review that. So that's a $700 fee. We do that every year anyway, so it's already been updated. But... Tennessee only has to do home studies every two years, different states, different rules. So we would have to fork that out again. Um, there are no additional, so we'd have to do that for our home study. There's no additional fees to, to do an extension, but they do ask for your biometrics again, which is your fingerprinting. Um, but they will extend that once. You, if we approve your extension, so they may just be like, we're not gonna approve your extension, we don't care. They don't give rules about this. We're not entitled to an extension. They just may say no. If you do not request an extension before your I-600A approval expires, you must start over and file a whole new form, which is another six and a half months. So the advantage to the extension is you don't have to wait again. Um, but if they choose not to approve it, then what are you going to do? So again, the I-600A is the application for advanced processing of an orphan petition. So that means we're asking to adopt these children on the forefront. Liberia is doing their side. We're doing our side. So, um, if you want to reach out to your government officials and talk about this, like, this is just, this is ridiculous for adoptive families. Like, we have to jump through so many hoops. And for us to get to Liberia, for these other families to get to Liberia, and the U.S. Embassy demand, like, additional investigation, DNA testing, fingerprinting, like, all this stuff to be done again, because they have concerns about the safety of these kids, the U.S. State Department. I'm like, dude, you have had my stuff for a year and a half. If you had a question about whether or not my agency, myself, my husband, my community, my pastor, like everybody that we know has had to throw in on this. And not to mention the thousands of dollars this costs. Um, you know, every month we pay pre-adoptive care to keep our kids fed, clothed. They're going to a nice school. They're doing well in Liberia, $500. So that's $16 a day. So, like, do the math. You know, we're looking at well over $16,000. Like, it's ridiculous. So, the reason, and we're fine. Like, I'm fine to pay for them to be safe and happy. But, like, you know, my other kids are at soccer camp right now. Like, that's where our kids, all of them should be there. I should be the mom that's chucking in five kids to soccer camp that are almost all the same age. You know, like, I want to be that mom that says, you know, we have all the Smiths. They're all here. And, yes, there are five of them. You know, there are 10... 10, 7, 7, and 6 today. Um, but that's not the, that's not what I'm doing. I'm on a video talking too long on a YouTube video sitting in a parking lot while my kids are at soccer camp trying to advocate for the ones that aren't here. And the reasons that they are not here, sadly, is the U.S. government breaking the law. So, and it's difficult when you say that they're breaking the law because it's foreign policy. So it's different. It's not like I can 
get arrested. It's not like they can get arrested for delaying adoptions intentionally. So if you would like to contact the State Department, I will give you um, their contact information and I'll give you the verbiage of what we're trying to get accomplished and the information that we want them to provide. They are saying that they're delaying stuff because they're trying to prevent fraud because they say that fraudulent things are happen have happened and are happening. And we want them to tell us how many fraudulent events have happened and what we can expect because of that. That's all we're asking for is numbers. So what we need you to do is to ask for numbers with us. Just ask them to show us because this is government operations. It's got to be transparent. So, okay. So Jeremy really didn't chime in at all. So I won't make him. But we appreciate you guys' help. And we hope that you um, will reach out to us and figure out who you can contact. Bye.